everybody. It's me again, Miss Sean from Early Learning and Slow Readiness, Play to Learn. And I'm coming back at you with some more cool kids in science. So one of the things that we talk about using a lot in class in your digital lessons is Play-Doh. Play-Doh is such a great tool for building fine motor muscles. Because you know, we have to have some stamina in our fingers in order to be able to write when we get old enough, right? And to be able to write for long periods of time. Sometimes our fingers get tired. So the best way to build that is to build our muscles in our fingers. And Play-Doh is a great way to do that. It's also a great tool for building letters, uh, building the letters in your name, making 3D shapes, making flat shapes, making pictures, doing anything with like art or creativity. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful sensory experience because it gives you a nice, cool texture to learn about and feel. So you can always go to the store by yourself. Oh, let me get the camera. Some Play-Doh, right? But sometimes you just want to be able to make your own. And what a great way to involve your kids um, in a fun little science experiment, because cooking is science, right? Um, but also to learn how to measure and pour and just to have some fun time, spending time together. And this is a all natural product. It will last for a long time if stored properly. You can change it and make any color you want. It's essentially like a salt dough recipe. So let's get started and I will walk you through it. So I have my nice bowl and I'm going to incorporate all of my dry ingredients first. So I'm going to start with one cup of flour. So that's two of these half cup measuring tools. So see how fun that is for kids? You get to count, you get to talk about numbers, you can feel the flower. Flower is such a cool texture you can feel. All right, so we've got about a half a cup here. We're gonna pour that in. We need a full cup though. So we're gonna get another cup half a cup full, nice and level on top. I'm gonna add that in. So let your kiddos feel it, let them pour it, make some mess, but it's so easy to clean up. And sometimes cooking together, making things together is the most fun that you might have. All right, then we need a quarter of a cup of salt. So that's this right here. So I'm gonna pour that in. And then we have this ingredient. Now this ingredient, which I dropped in the bowl, is optional. You don't have to use it, but it does make it a little fluffier. Um, cream of tartar is something that you add to things to make it light and fluffy, but it is optional. You do not have to add it. But for this particular um, thing that we're making, I'm gonna go ahead and add it because I happen to have some. So it is actually one tablespoon, but I only have a teaspoon measure. So I'm gonna need six of these to equal one tablespoon. So I'm gonna reach in, make it nice and level, and we're gonna count. Ready? One, two spoons of cream of tartar. Ha ha ha. For your count friends, three, four, five, and six. Right. So that is all in there. I'm going to mix it up so that my dry ingredients all mixed together, nice and even season. And there is the beginning of our homemade potato or just dough. All right, so now I need, I'm gonna use this, the same one that we used. I need half a cup of water, according to my All right, 
So uh, we need one of these. Half a cup, half a cup of warm water, by the way. So I have half a cup of warm water. I'm going to pour it in. And pouring is such a great skill. So let your kids practice pouring. It's just water. All you have to do is wipe it up if we make a mess, right? All right, so then if you want to, again, this is all optional. You have to have the water. But you don't have to have the food coloring, but you if you happen to have some, go ahead and pull it out, right? I have this cool neon food coloring. Let's see. I'm gonna go with, I can get it out of the box. I'm gonna go with this cool kind of neon pink neon red color. So you add it to the water. And the reason that you add it to the water is so that when you add it into your um, flour salt mixture, you can knead it together with your hands and hopefully, fingers crossed, it won't stain your hands. So I'm just gonna add three or four little drops. I'm going to mix it up and see what cool color I get. Kind of a neon pink color. And then we're going to slowly add it to our, <laughs> let me get my camera right, to our flour, salt, and cream of tartar recipe. So I'm going to pour a little in so you can see it. And then I'm going to start mixing just a little at a time. So I'm getting kind of a cool bubblegum pink color. I'm gonna add some more. Now remember, this is more about consistency. So this is our recipe, but it could be that we need to add a little more water. Could be that if it's too sticky, we have to add a little more flour. So it's not 100% exact all the time. Sometimes it works out quite nicely. Sometimes it doesn't. All right, we're going to add some more. I think it's definitely going to take all of what we have so far. We may need to add some more. We will see. All right, can you see? It's almost like bubblegum pink. I don't know if it's translating as well on camera as it is in person. All right. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour in here, just in case I need it. And I'm gonna start kneading it together with my fingers. But if I need to add some flour because it's too sticky, I'll have a little bit on the side ready to go. All right, so you got to roll up your sleeves, everybody. Because here we go. I think I'll put a little bit of water on my hands just to see if it doesn't yak. Yeah. Making a little mess, but that's okay. All right. Here we go. The cool thing about this is you can mix colors and make any color Play-Doh you need for whatever special project you want to work on. So I'm going to put this in my hand. Here we go. Oh, look at that. So it's a little sticky, right? Look, is that the right consistency? Mm, I don't think so. I think we need to add some more flour. So let's do that. Good thing I got some ready to go right here. I'm going to put it in. I'm going to mix it up. See if we can get the right. Mm, that's feeling better. So 
still a little sticky, but definitely feeling better. It's like making your own bread dough, except this dough we get to play with. We're gonna roll it together. Oh, look, see how it's starting to come and not be so sticky? Add some more. That was a lot. Let's see how that works out. Till we get the exact easy to work with consistency that we need. All right, so I'm gonna keep working on this. And then we'll come back as soon as I have it ready. So you guys keep working and then I'll be right back. So, hey everybody, I'm back. So I finally got my consistency right and hopefully you guys are working on yours as well too. Look at my bubble gum pink. I hope you can see how pink this is. My bubble gum pink homemade Play-Doh. So I had to add quite a bit of fl uh, flour. So make sure you add that water in real slow um, because I made it a super sticky mess. And so I had to add lots more flour and really work it. You can see my hands are a little bit dirty. But now if I go and wash my hands and they'd be nice and clean and I can tear off a piece of my dough, I can roll it into balls. I can roll it into snakes. And I can even make a letter. Look at that. So your very own homemade Play-Doh in just minutes. Easy to clean, non-toxic, a fun um, experience for your kiddos to make their own, make their own colors, color mixing, the whole bit. Fun, fun times and squishy and exciting and fun. Oh, that's right. And make sure that you store it in a bag when you're done so that it doesn't dry out and it will last for a really long time in a really good sealed bag. All right. All right. So have a great time. Have fun together. Some more kitchen science mixed with sensory and art and all kinds of fine motor fun right here to build those muscles and have some fun together as a family making something new. All right, guys, keep playing and learning. Bye.